On today's episode of the Locked On NHL podcast, we'll discuss the biggest winners at the trade deadline in the West, why the Vegas Golden Knights continue to maneuver the salary cap with long-term injured reserve relief, and why Logan Stankoven can give the Dallas Stars bigger impact than they could have gotten in a trade. All that on today's episode. We are your team every day. You're Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What is happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On NHL podcast. We are your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Locked On NHL your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode of Locked on NHL is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Locked on NHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. On today's episode of Locked on NHL, we will take a look at the biggest winners of the trade deadline in the Western Conference. Take a look at the moves that the Colorado Avalanche made as they continue to cultivate their roster around their top-end players. We'll also talk about the Vegas Golden Knights using long-term injured reserve to their benefit once again. And a look at how Logan Stankoven is making a massive impression on the Dallas Stars. My name is Seth Topol, host of Locked on Wild, and we had the trade deadline last week, and it is no surprise that the Colorado Avalanche are amongst the biggest winners, if not the biggest winner, of the trade deadline this year. And obviously for Colorado, they made uh, one of the, I think, surprise moves of the trade deadline by sending Bowen Byram to the Buffalo Sabres in exchange for Casey Middlestad. In order to try to shore up the second line, especially at the center position, something that they tried to do when acquiring Ryan Johansson, and uh, there just was a lot that did not go well in the Johansson tenure, uh, wasn't producing at the rate that the uh, Avalanche were looking for, and it was starting to get a little frustrating with players in the locker room, uh, some tweets from Adrian Dater uh, suggesting that uh, there was some friction between Johansson and uh, members of the uh, the Avalanche because he just he just didn't seem to really fit what they were trying to do. And so, what does Colorado do about it? They ship him off to Philadelphia. The Flyers end up waving him, and the Avalanche deal from a position of strength to send Byram to the Sabres in exchange for Casey Middlestad, a good old-fashioned hockey trade between the Avs and the Sabres. And obviously, Byram has a large amount of potential. He has a, a, a great, bright future in front of him. But if you're Colorado, you also have the likes of Kale McCarr and Devon Taves in front of Bowen Byram. And so if Byram, um, if he pans out, he's going to end up being a second pair defenseman, you know, just by the fact that you've got those two guys on your roster, he's going to end up being a second pairing guy at, you know, probably his top end. But this is how playoff teams like the Avalanche just continue to do it, is they just continue to, find different ways to maneuver through. They obviously have a ton of money tied into some real great top end players, but they're not afraid to make some big swings to try to help out that talent and keep that contention window open. Uh, Middlestat fills a huge need for them and also is still a young player in and of his own right. So there is potential that Middlestat can provide an impact this season and uh, can even have that impact extend into next season as well. But that was just the tip of the iceberg for the Colorado avalanche 
at the trade deadline. The Avalanche also went out and grabbed uh, Sean Walker in exchange for Ryan Johansson and um, a conditional first-round pick in 2025. That pick is top 10 protected. The Flyers sent a fifth-round pick with Walker, and Walker just slots right in on that Avalanche bottom six. Probably a third-line guy. But um, uh, again, not only there, but then they go out and they get Brandon Duhame from the Minnesota Wilds, who will fit in nicely on the fourth line for the Colorado Avalanche. And so you get those guys and uh, you also go out and you grab Yakov Trenin. And, and it's just it's a complete revamp of the bottom six for the Colorado avalanche. And it's like, it's like they were driving in the car and they went and uh, they just, they made a pit stop for some snacks and some groceries. And then they just got right back in the car and they kept on going. But it's interesting too. You also see the, uh, the avalanche ship out Ben Myers and Myers was a player that they had uh, acquired to try to fill one of those uh, bottom six roles. Myers had been mostly in the AHL, played nine games with Colorado this season, had one goal uh, that was his only point in those nine games. He had 11 goals in 32 games with the Colorado Eagles in the AHL. But you see them evaluating on both ends. They're, they're getting pieces that can help them win right now, and they're also not afraid to make moves involving players that they don't necessarily see as a fit for uh, for them going forward. So I loved what the Colorado Avalanche were able to do at the trade deadline, brought in a ton of um, experience, ton of physicality, and most importantly, they went out and they took care of what was arguably their biggest need ahead of the uh, the stretch run towards the uh, the playoffs. They're obviously well entrenched in the uh, the postseason. And so for them to be able to go out and do that, I thought made them one of the clear winners of the trade deadline in the Western Conference. Now, other teams in the West that uh, I thought had a, a very good trade deadline on both sides. It, it was interesting because... You saw the Calgary Flames send as many players out as they did. Uh, obviously, they uh, they sent Noah Hannafin out. They um, they sent out a few other pieces as well. Um, but the return was kind of underwhelming. They sent Chris Tanev out, and they have been just in this kind of reassessment, reevaluation stage since last season ended and they got they got a good haul for the players that they shipped out but i think a lot of experts have agreed that the biggest piece that they'll be able to get back the biggest opportunity for them to get a big haul will be if jacob markstrom is moved in the offseason the new jersey devils still expected to go hard after that in the off season. And so there's potential that the Calgary flames could really do a number on their asset return for all these players uh, when the off season gets here. So Calgary, I thought did pretty much everything that they should have done, but that Markstrom piece, not dealing him at the deadline it could be looked at as uh, a little bit of a loss as well. I loved what uh, what Edmonton did in trying to shore up their uh, their bottom six as well. Uh, but I think other than the team that we will be talking about here specifically coming up next, I think Colorado had the biggest trade deadline impact. Uh, and so got to put them up at the top of the list in terms of the winners. But the Vegas Golden Knights are the other team because they kind of came out of nowhere, including arguably the biggest jaw dropper of the trade deadline, other than the Bowen Byram Casey Middlestat exchange. 
How about the fact that Tomas Hurdle just happens to pop up and be available? And the Vegas Golden Knights just so happen to have enough room to be able to make it work. We'll talk about their continued cultivation of long-term injured reserve cap space as we continue today's episode of the Lockdown NHL podcast after this. Today's episode of Lockdown NHL is brought to you by Sleeper. With the final two months of the season already in full swing, you can still win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Lockdown NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey. Because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether elite level players like Connor McDavid, Nathan McKinnon, Alex Ovechkin, or Sidney Crosby will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minus, and more in a given game. To win a 100 times bet on Sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code LOCKDOWNNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKDOWNNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Welcome back to today's episode of the Locked On NHL podcast. Once again, we are your team every day. We thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen each and every day. The Vegas Golden Knights had a very busy trade deadline because not only did they put Mark Stone on long-term injured reserve, they also go out and get Noah Hannafin and Tomas Hurdle who uh, just so happens to uh, to suddenly be available. Uh, now, Hurdle is injured, and so his impact will not be felt by the Vegas Golden Knights here for a little bit at least. But this happens, it seems like, on a yearly basis, is the Vegas Golden Knights have some key player that they have to put on long-term injury reserve. It's been Mark Stone the last few times it's happened. And then they go out and they spend up to, you know, the amount of cap space that they have because it's a bigger fish. They can go get a bigger piece to add to that. And then it just so happens that in this case, Mark Stone, uh, th this happens in the uh, the lead up to the, the cup last year. Mark Stone just so happens to be able to come off of long term injured reserve and right back onto the playoff roster because the salary cap for the postseason is not um, is not a factor. There is no postseason salary cap, and so Stone is able to hop off long term injured reserve and hop back into the lineup, which leads to a large majority of fans throwing their hands up in the air and saying, "Hey, what gives?" Why does Vegas Golden why does Vegas continue to get away with this and continue to use this at their disposal and why hasn't the NHL done something about it Folks this this possibility exists for every single team in the NHL The problem is that you have to for it to make a massive impact you have to have a key contributor who goes on long-term injured reserve and misses a large chunk, if not the rest of the season. The two biggest examples we've seen with this are the Vegas Golden Knights over the last few years and the Tampa Bay Lightning with Nikita Kucherov, the year that he was on long-term injured reserve for basically the whole season, had uh, surgery, I believe, was, was what put him on LTIR. He then was basically given the entirety of the regular season to rehab, to get himself back in position to make an impact. He comes back and he does. And 
so that's part of the equation is that you have to have a player that is of massive importance to your team go on long-term injured reserve to be able to have that money. And it's not the entirety of their contract either. There is a percentage of that that is not accessible. But with Mark Stone on long-term injured reserve, that obviously gives you a much bigger salary to be working with to try to go get a couple of impact pieces. In this case, Noah Hannafin and Tomas Hurdle. Um, Stone is currently occupying not his salary is nine point five million dollars. So you have him. You also have Robin Leonard, who is on long term injured reserve, and William Carrier. That's fifteen point nine million dollars of long term injured reserve space. And the other reason that we see the Vegas Golden Knights continue to use this to their advantage is because their contention window is continuously open, and so. They use this loophole to try to give themselves an opportunity to continue to be a playoff contender. When other teams that are maybe not as legit of contenders have players go on long-term injured reserve, there isn't a huge incentive to fill that space. The Minnesota Wild this year, with Jared Spurgeon on long-term injured reserve, utilize that space to allow for more standard call-ups. The Wilds could have taken opportun an opportunity to acquire somebody uh, at 6 or $7 million a year to uh, add to their books, but they're facing cap constraints as well. And the fact that the Golden Knights added Hurdle into the mix Hurdle's contract is at $6.75 million all the way through the end of 2029-2030. But Vegas also routinely moves pieces around on their roster. They cultivate their roster. And so in order to get Mark Stone back in, um, there will be some moves made to... Um, get themselves back cap compliant. That's why you see the likes of um, Max Pacioretty basically given to the Carolina Hurricanes for little to nothing. The Golden Knights are taking advantage of this loophole by the NHL, but every team in the league has the opportunity to do so. It's just that Vegas has... Vegas has turned it into... Uh, an, an art form that has uh, led to them being able to fully maximize it here over these last few seasons. And so until the NHL does something about it to where they explicitly forbid teams to operate in this manner, Vegas is going to keep doing it. And so it's frustrating. I'm sure I, I remember when my NHL fandom was beginning I was frustrated by it. How can they keep getting away with it? Well, because the NHL doesn't really police it uh, as much as they probably should. So until the NHL does something about it, Vegas is just going to continue to utilize all the options that are available to them to put the best roster out on the ice that they can. Now, the other part of it is if you want to get mad at somebody, ask yourself, why are the San Jose Sharks trading Tomas Hurdle? to the Vegas Golden Knights, but they uh, they did get a conditional first back. They did send a couple of third round picks to Vegas in return, but um, yeah, just just interesting that um, it's it seems like it's the same response every time Vegas does this, even though every other team has the capability to do so. The Dallas Stars had uh, one major impact move that they made before the trade deadline, but their biggest impact in terms of the roster is going to come from a rookie. That rookie's name is Logan Stankoven. We'll talk about how he has helped deepen the Dallas Stars lineup as we finish today's episode of the Lockdown NHL podcast after this. 
Today's episode of the Locked On NHL podcast is also brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. And with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home the win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. One final segment of today's episode of the Lockdown NHL podcast. Once again, we are your team every day. Uh, the Dallas Stars, they made one big notable acquisition ahead of the trade deadline, and it actually happened uh, in the lead up to the trade deadline uh, before actual trade deadline week uh, as the Dallas Stars brought in Chris Tanev in exchange for uh, a few prospects. The Devils also retained 50% of Tanev's salary. But there's been a rookie for the Dallas Stars that has been making a massive impact since he came into the lineup, that being Logan Stankovic who has five goals and three assists since he came into the lineup in a total of eight games played. Uh, that obviously has helped the Dallas Stars to one of the top spots in the Central Division. And you look at their lineup, they're not asking Stankoven to play a major role. Um, they're just asking him to help deepen this lineup. Uh, Daily Faceoff has him listed as a member of the third line with Jamie Benn and Wyatt Johnston. That's a deep, deep lineup that that is your third line, but you've got J Jason Robertson, Rupe Hintz, Joe Pavelski. You got Mason Marchment, Matt Duchesne, Sam Steele. The Dallas Stars might have the deepest lineup in the entirety of the NHL. And so the fact that Stankoven can come in as a rookie, he's not being thrown into a high pressure situation. He's simply asked to be part of the ride. And how about having a four point game against the San Jose Sharks? He had two goals, two assists, including a power play goal in their seven to six overtime win over the San Jose Sharks. Also had a goal against the Winnipeg Jets in the game that started the Stars' current five-game winning streak, a 4-1 to win over the Winnipeg Jets. And so I talk about this a lot on Locked on Wild because we see often veteran players given minutes that should maybe go to young prospects uh, or to rookies even. Because rookies always have the potential to surprise you. With a veteran player, you you know what you're going to get. There are, there's a chance that it, that, that uh, production is exceeded, but by and large, it's going to be met or the veteran player will come in a, a little below what you're hoping for, what you're expecting. There is a greater chance with a rookie player that they catch fire and are able to give you above and beyond the impact that you were hoping for in the first place. And Stankoven, I think, has been nothing short of a pleasant surprise for a Dallas team that is one of the best in the West. And if he can continue this, if he can continue this, there is there are going to be few teams that can match up against the Dallas Stars from a lineup perspective. Now, defensively and between the pipes, there are certainly some questions as to what Dallas brings to the table 
um, for a postseason series. But that lineup, that lineup for Dallas plays. That lineup definitely plays uh, and is going to cause some problems. Currently, most goals in the Western Conference, yes, it is one goal more than what the Colorado Avalanche currently have. But there is a reason that they are, in fact, to take it one step further, leading the NHL in goals right now. Uh, so, obviously, a, a very, very strong lineup. And it's great to see that uh, Logan Stankoven is having a role while also not being expected to be a massive piece. He's just asked to come along for the ride, which is something that is way more sustainable if you're not having him try to hop into a top line role or or be the the driver of the bus. If he can just be a passenger on it, you're going to have a lot more a lot more chance for that production to sustain here through the rest of the season. So good on Logan Stankoven for having a uh, big role so far and uh, we will see if he can continue it here as the uh, season unfolds. That will wrap up today's episode of the Locked on NHL podcast. Make sure to leave a like for this video if you haven't already. And make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. You can find new episodes every Monday through Friday from our wide array of Locked on NHL hosts covering the biggest topics throughout the week from the Eastern Conference to power rankings to checking in on some of the biggest stories and hottest teams. Locked on NHL has you covered all week long. You can find new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.